Hi, I'm Ella, and I'm a sophomore here at Grosse Point South High School. Have you ever gotten the hiccups in the most inconvenient times? Because I know I have. And kind of every time you try to stop hiccuping, it just turns out that you hiccup even louder. Well, this happened to me. One day I was in yoga class, and it was pretty quiet in the room. And everyone was just doing yoga, minding their own business. And all of a sudden, I hiccuped super loud, and it was really embarrassing. <laughs> And everyone kind of looked at me, and I thought, OK, whatever. My hiccups will just go away over the course of the class. But they didn't. They continued for a good half hour, and it was mortifying. Although I'm not here to talk about hiccups, I'm here to talk about yoga and how it taught me individualism. For my 20 time project, I did yoga. What is yoga? How do you do yoga? What's yoga all about? And I learned a lot. And overall, it was super fun. I learned to do handstands and bridge poses, and I'm just a lot more balanced and stronger than I was before. On the picture on your left, that's a picture of me after my first yoga class, and I was so excited that I did yoga for the first time that I came home, and I was standing in the, in the kitchen, and I was like, Mom, take my picture, it's kitchen yoga. And, <laughs> and she was like, okay, so that's what that's from. And although yoga taught me like all these things, that's not the most important thing it taught me. It taught me about individualism. One day, I was in yoga class, and it was one of my first yoga classes, and the whole yoga thing was still really foreign to me. I showed up, put my mat down, sat down waiting for the class to start. I was sitting there, and my teacher was trying to show us how to do a crow pose. A crow pose is basically where you just balance on your arms. And so I looked to the right of me, and I saw someone else doing a crow pose, and I thought, OK, I can do that. I looked to the other side of me, and I saw someone else doing a crow pose. And I thought, all right, I can do that. And so I tried, and I kept looking to the other person next to me to see how they were doing this crow pose. And I was trying to mimic what they were doing, because I thought, all right, they're doing it right. But that's not the thing. You see, as I looked around the room, I saw everyone had a different crow pose. They expressed the pose in a very different way from each other. I saw this again with headstands. As you can see, these, all three of these pictures are all headstands. However, they're all, they're all expressed by different people in different ways. My headstand is the one on your far left. You can see it's a lot different than the other two, but it's still a headstand, and it's my headstand, and it's how I express the pose. I saw this again and again. I saw this with the tree pose. On the right, there's a picture of some professional person by a beach doing a very professional and sophisticated looking tree pose. And that's how they do the tree pose, and that's okay. But then you see on the right, I mean, on your left, that's me and my friend. And no matter how silly we look and how goofy we look, we're doing it right because that's how we want to express the pose. Once again, I saw this with handstands. However, I'm not up here because I didn't want to fall on my face before the TED Talk. <laughs> um, all three of these pictures, there's people standing on their hands. It's a handstand. But the difference is that they're all doing it in a different way. That's the thing. They're expressing the pose in their own way. Yoga really taught me the whole idea of individualism. There's a huge emphasis on individualism and how you express a pose. The definition of individualism is the habit or principle of being independent or self-reliant. Independent or self-reliant. If you're independent, you're not relying on others to tell you who you are or what you should be doing. And if you're self-reliant, you, you don't need other people or who they think you should be to define yourself. So this is passion fruit. And if you're being an individual, you can find a passion. Passion fruit, passion, haha, -ha. it's funny. <laughs> and so that's a really artsy picture, so I just thought I'd include it. So you've got to find something you're passionate about. But how do you do this, and why do you want to do this? Well, how? By being an individual. If you're being yourself, you can find something that's unique to you that you like to do. But why? What's the big deal with finding a passion? If, you're, if you find a passion, it's something that you love. And if you find something lo you love, you can achieve great things. You see, when you're doing something you love and something you're passionate about, you're driven to do great things, and you'll go places. 
Individuality versus high school. This is a pretty iffy topic because in high school, people are often trying to define themselves. They're trying to think, all right, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? And it's kind of difficult if you're getting opinions from parents, teachers, even sometimes friends, telling you who you should be, what you should be doing, maybe even what sports you should be doing or what you should look like. You shouldn't be looking to other people or listening to their opinions to tell you who you are or what you should be doing. You should be find, finding this from within yourself. See, this is the problem. There are so many people taking outside sources of who they should be, and they're not finding it for themselves. And if they don't find it for themselves, they're not going to find a passion, and they will not achieve great things. This reminds me of a Ralph Waldo Emerson quote. Emerson said, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something different is the greatest accomplishment. And truly it is the greatest accomplishment. Because if you're being yourself and you're doing something you love, you'll achieve great things. So how do you do this? How do you be an individual? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You've got to focus on you, not the person next to you. If you're always looking to the person next to you, to the person to the yoga mat next to you and trying to copy their headstand and their handstand and their tree pose or whatever they're doing, you're not focusing enough on your own yoga practice and you'll never live up to its full potential. This can be paralleled directly with life. If you're constantly looking to others and looking to the opinions of others to define yourself and who you are and what you like to do, you'll never actually find it. So I wanna challenge you. Take that, I want you to take a step back and think. Are you being an individual? Are you doing things that you love to do? Or are you trying to satisfy others? I want you to take the challenge and be an individual. Thank you.